hey guys compliments of the season my name is umo i'm a fashion designer and pattern drafter welcome to university of pattern drafting a channel where i share my expertise in garment construction and pattern drafting through tutorials so this tutorial is going to be on how i drafted the patterns for the skirt part of this dress so notice that this dress has a high overlapping slit as well as um, draped pleats so i'm going to be teaching you how to use slash and spread method to create this um, pleats and it is going to be a really interesting tutorial because slash and spread method is a pretty interesting method to use to create pleats so here is a clearer um, picture of the dress you can see how happy the bride is so this is something that um, is really interesting to create and just really nice if at this point you haven't subscribed like guys I, I, how would you be living this year without subscribing to my channel please make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn off turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever i upload a new video so on to the tutorial guys i start by creating the pattern for the skirt part of this dress and when i mean the skirt part of this dress i actually mean from the natural waistline to like the ankle or if you want it longer you can add about two to three inches to the full length of your dress okay so i think in this one i added two inches because that's what i'll normally do so notice that i created this skirt pattern on the fold and so i have opened up the full skirt pattern and i am just tracing out the middle line sorry my center front line so if you see any markings on this um, pattern paper it's actually because i did the i already traced out um, what i am going to be drafting out so that it will just be easier to explain so i'm doing that for first of notice i have two copies of this um of the skirt pattern and both of them are on the fold remember that this skirt has um, a high overlapping slit in front so we need two copies of the skirt pattern of this dress to create that effect so first off i'm going to be creating the um fuller part of the overlap that's the main part of the overlapping slits so um from the side seam from the side seam measure So from the side, they measure about three inches inwards. Notice that this pattern has no um, side seam allowance. I didn't include any side seam allowance on this pattern paper. And then that is the hip line. So the hip line is nine inches from the natural waistline. hip line is nine inches from the natural waistline so i'm just going to create a um a just a box at that point you get so i connected the hip line to the center front line and then i came up from the hip line by about an inch do you understand and i just drew a horizontal line at that point and then i'm, I'm tracing out the same three inches that i measure, measured at the top or the waist natural waistline of the pattern paper and then i am creating i'm just drawing out a a line that may or may not be straight so can you see that guys because if you notice from the picture the um the other side of the overlap part of this skirt is just really tiny do you understand so that's why I made it just about three inches. So this is, I'm measuring from the natural waistline to the knee. 
can you see that measuring from the natural waistline to the knee and then from the center front i'm marking about um two inches two inches away from the center front can you see that's that line i'm creating it's two inches away from the center front line can you see that all the way to my knee and then all the way to my hip line oh sorry that one inch um, line above my hip line can you see that and then from the knee to that one inch above the knee like the hip line just create a curve can you see that's what i have done so we've created the first part of the skirt do you understand so that's essentially what we've done and then i'm going ahead to create the second side of the skirt i hope you guys understand just calm down and <laughs> try to pay attention i'm sure this will be clear to you because this um tutorial is really important i think this is something that is going to that's already even stay trending because i've been seeing it around a lot so i think it's something you should actually learn so i'm going ahead to create the second part of my skirt so i'm marking um the hip line again which is nine inches from my natural waistline And then I'm marking about five inches from my side seam, my side seam line on my side. Yeah, my side seam, um, just the side seam anyways of the pattern. So mark that five inches all the way to your knee. And then draw a straight line can you see that mark the five inches all the way to your knee and draw a straight line so this is me creating the same um, um box that i created for the first part of the overlap just doing the same thing and then creating a curve from my knee to that hip line do you understand that can you see that so from the knee to the hip line just create a curve that's essentially what it is so seeing as we've gone ahead to create that overlap okay so I'm just ensuring that the knee um, the knee area aligns. Do you understand that? So I'm just creating my curve. If at this point you haven't subscribed, guys, like seriously, are you going to end this year without subscribing to this channel? So please be nice enough to subscribe and uh, make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever i upload new videos okay so i have gone ahead to cut out my pattern pieces can you see that guys the center front so notice that when i was cutting the inner um, um part of this um, overlap i i cut it along that curve that i had created do you understand because the upper part has to be full so the the hip side of both of them have um the hip areas of the both patterns are there i didn't cut anything out do you understand so that is firmer and it's not like something is just shifting and all that and all that okay so i'm going ahead to create my slash and um, create my pleats using the slash and spread method so as from the um picture you can see that the slits the splits are sort of like diagonal so i measured um i think this is five inches from the natural waistline and then each of the pleats are one inch apart and you get so one inch and one inch and one inch so on one side starts at 
I think it's either four or five inches from the natural waistline. And then at the other side, just start from the natural waistline so that you have that um, diagonal effect, just to create the diagonal effect that the pleats has. So each of these lines are one inch apart. Not anything, there's nothing, there's no, it's not that much of a big deal, just one inch apart. And then that's all, I think I have about six lines. I think about six lines. So can you see? The first one is diagonal, can you see how it is? So that's why we stared at four inches from the natural waistline on one side. And then on the other side, we stared at the, we stared, um, marking the one inch at the natural waistline. So about six splits is what we're going to be trying to create. I'm just um, erasing all the other lines so that it won't be confusing. So now I am cutting along my lines. I'm going to cut to the edge of the paper, but not through. Notice cut to the edge of the paper, but don't cut it through. So cut to the edge of the paper, but not through. Cut to the edge of the paper, but not through. Because they must still be together. They mustn't be separated. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I think about six. Six splits or so. So cut two, but not through. And then at this point, you, you have just um, a very tiny um, thing that the paper is holding on to. So you really have to be careful so that the paper doesn't separate. So can you see, we're going to go ahead. I'm using newspaper now for this um, slash and spread thingy so that it's clearer. So place your newspaper beneath the pattern paper. Can you see what I am doing? And then begin to spread. So that's the whole idea, slash and spread. So now you've, you've slashed. So now you're going ahead to spread, you get so slash and spread and then use your paper tape you really need to use paper tape and not the regular um cello tape because paper tape with paper tape you can still fold but with the regular tape since it's i think it's sort of like nylonish you won't be able to fold the paper very well so um between the the slashes i think it's about five inches i think i'm leaving about five inches so five inches between um i'm spreading them by five inches anyways so each of them is i'm spreading them out by five inches and the pleats should actually be sorry this this space in between your lines should actually be equal so that your pleats would look balanced and all that so that's five inches can you see mark that point so it doesn't shift and then use your paper tip to hold it down do you understand so you can see that i am spreading it by five inches spreading them apart by about five inches okay so i'm just going to do the same so i'm going to do that for each of the For each of them. So it's going to be the same five, five inches all the way. And then you do that for each of the lines. And ensure that, um, so you'll notice that at the other edge, it would be um, the... It will be getting sort of like curved, but it doesn't matter. It's still going to be okay. Jig it. So when I'm done, I'll try to fold the pleats so that you can see what it's going to actually look like. Do you understand? So um, I needed to use another newspaper at this point, and then it's the same five inches. So it's the same thing, same um, five inches apart 
I hope this tutorial has been really helpful thus far. If you have found this tutorial helpful, please ensure that you give us a like. And if you have any questions as regards this, as regards um, whatever, you can drop your questions in the comment section of this video. And also, if you haven't subscribed, like guys, uh -uh, why now? Please ensure that you hit the subscribe button at this point. Thank you so very much for that. Okay, so back to the tutorial. It's the same five inches apart. I think I just wanted to sh show. Um, I didn't want to crop the video so that you just see everything. Do you get so that nothing is. Um, when you start to do yours, it doesn't start to look strange. Do you understand? So it's the same thing all the way. And also, um, guys, if you have noticed, I was um, really. I kind of took a break from um posting videos this was because i had to meet some end of the year deadlines you know the usual now so towards the end of the year it's everybody just has like a huge um load of or a huge um load of deadlines to meet up with so i couldn't keep up with that i've loved to film a lot of the outfits that i made for my clients but i just didn't even have the time to start setting up camera lighting you know and all that and all that so i would try now that i have officially closed for the year i would try to put up a lot more videos so make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, the notification bell so that <coughs> excuse me you get notified when i upload new videos and ensure that you give this video a like because it will go a long way thank you guys Okay, so I think I'm almost done at this point, and you can see how huge my paper has become. Okay, so the next step is really, really, really important because you can't just um, cut randomly. I'm just trying to put a lot more cello tape so that um, everything is firm and all that. So when I start to roll and move around, things don't start to shift. So this next step is really, 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 really important. So please pay attention to what I am about to do at this point. So now um, you have to find the midpoints of each of these five inch um, spaces, which will be 2.5 inches. So that's what you can see me marking. Find the midpoints of this each of these five inches. This point, this um, step is really, really important, guys. So find the midpoint here and then from the I think I'm trying to shift my camera at this point. Okay. From the midpoint of so from the midpoint, can you see what I'm doing? I'm creating um pointed edges, jiggers, because you can't just cut out the you can't just cut the newspaper out and then just cut it out straight. Jiggers. So create pointed edges. Can you see that? You need to create pointed edges for each of the pleats. So from the center, draw along that midpoint. Draw a straight line along that midpoint and then create pointed edges. Very, very important, guys. And I'm going to cut along those pointed edges. So it's not like I'm just wasting my time. So do the same thing for all five of them. And then for the last one to create the same pointed edges. This is why when you were um, um, putting the newspaper, whatever paper you put underneath, you needed to have um, made sure that there was excess at the edges. Jiggered. So create pointed edges. And then now I'm going ahead to use my um, scissors to cut. So note how I'm cutting them. Can you see that? Cutting out the pointed edges and then I'm also I'm cutting out the pointed edges as well as the flat edges do you understand so don't just cut it out like just randomly like that so cut out the pointed edges as well as the flat edges So can you see I'm cutting out the flat edges too. So you see how it's going to look like. And then I'm going to fold the pleats so that you see exactly what it looks like when I'm done. Can you see that? So from the midpoints now, 
I'm folding the pleats. So when you're cutting on fabric, you're going to cut it out exactly like this with the pointed edges. Do you understand? So you just place this pattern on fabric and then cut it out exactly like this. This pointed edge is now the essence of leaving it there is for you to know where the midpoint of each of the pleats is. Do you understand? So once you are done folding it up like this and then you can you see the pleats? Can you see how beautiful they look? So do that for all five of them. And once you are done doing that, folding in the right way, then you can cut out the excess. Do you understand? You can cut out the excess. I don't think, I think as I mentioned earlier, this pattern doesn't include um, seam allowance. I think when I was cutting, I included about 1.5 inches seam allowance. If you usually use one inch for your seam allowance, it's advisable to use 1.5 inches in this case, jiggers, because of this whole slash and spread thing, so that you don't lose, lose out um, any inch whatsoever so can you see how beautiful this looks so this is exactly how it's going to look on fabric this is really nice this pleats um thingy has been trending for a while so if you've had issues creating i think um the one that, okay so this is how the end result looks like i tried to put it on my mannequin but it didn't fit well and this is a wedding dress more so it's white so i just didn't want to be moving it around so um this please was this tutorial is how i created the skirt part this upper part is a different ball game entirely do you understand so this upper part is a different ball game entirely but the um skirt part is what i was trying to show you so this is exactly what it looked like and then after doing that use hemming gum in between the pleats Jeanne, can you see how flat and smooth mine is so use hemming gum in between so that it stays so that's what I did here. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please hit, give us a like and then make sure you subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching guys. Ciao.